So what's it all about, this Scale Up Club thing that some of you are wondering? Well, it's around meeting, sharing, collaborating and learning. So there's a little bit of learning each time, about meeting new people, sharing best practice, sharing what, sharing ideas, experiences and looking for opportunities to collaborate. That's essentially what, what we're all about. The, um, what inspired us to really do this sort of thing and do everything that we do really uh, is, is around the fact that very few businesses in this country scale of the 6 million or so businesses that there are around in, in, in the UK, less than 1% grow beyond 50 employees. And in fact, only about 4% grow beyond 10 employees. That means 96% of all businesses in this country have fewer than 10 employees. And we want to ex explore some of the reasons for that, but also help those businesses that want to scale to give them the right systems and support to be able to do that. Not everybody does want to scale, and that's absolutely fine. Um, and everything we do will support anybody um, simply trying to build a really efficient and profitable business. But we also want to really try and see if we can help to move the needles on those on those dials. And one of the reasons why um, it's so so tricky in a, in a way is bridging that strategy execution gap there's only a few percent only about 10 percent of businesses manage to get both the strategic side and the execution side right and a lot of that comes around to leadership um, and which we'll be discussing a little bit more today but a lot of what we're trying to do is to help to try and help most of us all of us really to get better at uh, that strategy, that execution, and bridging that gap through through alignment. Uh, and a lot of what we do is around that. And we have developed our own system around uh, with 90 day planning at the heart, that rhythm 90, uh, looking at the four key pillars of scaling up as we go up the scale up, scale up journey, which many of you have seen me talk about on the right with things like the valleys of death in between that we've got to be very aware of. But you'll notice that spanning across everything but no matter where we are on our scale up journey building for value goes across it all but so does leadership and that's why leadership is so important and we'll be looking at that in a little bit more in a, in a moment so last time around we looked at rhythm habits and we looked at championing championing execution uh, through great rhythm habits and granger led a fantastic session on on that for those of you that, that you were there and was talking about the fact that correct business rhythm will actually save us time it's not about meetings for meetings sake um, and gives us all sorts of advantages as we as we go through and it also helps to avoid interruptions and we know those of us that um those of us that, that thought about it know that we lose a lot of productivity every time we're interrupted so part of a good business rhythm is to make sure that we save the challenges that we need to need to address for the appropriate time and they're not just drip fed throughout the day causing lots of lots of distractions and it's about linking the strategy with the execution. So yes, we've got some things we want to do maybe once a year, the more strategic, but equally daily, we got some, we need to keep the plates spinning. And we focused on the weekly session, how important as part of that rhythm, a really good, we call it a smart seven meeting, but that, that seven day, that weekly meeting once a week can be really, it can be an incredibly valuable thing to do. And we left the challenge, what one thing can you do to improve your business rhythm? So that was that was last time, last time around. I'm just going to let somebody in from the meeting room. I see Chris is, Chris is there, Caroline. So this time it's it's around leadership. And as I mentioned earlier, it spans the whole, the whole, journey really on our scale up scale up journey and typically there's a there's a change in the kind of leadership that we need to think about within our businesses as we get more people often it's around that eight to twelve employee level up to that point really it's primarily about developing our own skills as a leader and being the best version of ourselves that we can that we can be but we're starting to lead other people so it's a bit of a leader follower type model as we get beyond that and we've got more people, we can't possibly be the one that's telling everybody what to do um, and, and just leading, leading from the front. So we need to start to develop leaders within the business and move to more towards a leader leader type type model. Of course, it's not a hard, you know, it's not simply where that dotted line is. It, it clearly is a is a bit of a bit of a spectrum. Um, but we need to we need to start transitioning from that point. And also from a delegation point of view, initially, if we want to build a successful business, 
uh, early on, we've got to be able to delegate the things that we shouldn't be doing or that we're not not the best at. So we don't want to be keeping hold of bookkeeping and general admin things if we don't need to, to free us up to make sure that we can focus on the more important things. As we go beyond that point, the delegation thing needs to start to change to delegating even the things that we are the best at because otherwise we just simply become the bottleneck within the within the business and what i thought i'd do we we, we did some research about 18 months ago now and we're going to be repeating it into the challenges of building uh, and scaling a business and i'm just going to pick out a few key points from that because it leads into the leadership side of things so early on when we've got that one person business and we're starting to transition to three to five really the, one of the big challenges is getting dragged back into day-to-day -day operations but also generating sufficient quality leads then it starts to move to attracting and hiring people getting staff to think and act and take responsibility but also ensuring consistency of delivery so when we're thinking leadership we need to be thinking some of these some of these things as we go a bit further continues with getting staff to think and act and take responsibility in the way we, that we would want them to and that continues really throughout but not having the right place the right staff in place to support growth and we all know how difficult it is particularly at the moment to find good staff but then the staff management making sure they do the right things consist consistently well becomes increasingly important as does potentially accessing funding uh, as we as we need to scale um, and then those sort of things continue a little bit as we as we get a bit further on. But if we look at particularly at our leadership focus, now clearly, you know, there's a, we need to basically do a lot of things across the whole journey from a leadership point of view. But if we were to pick out one or two key things, then rolling your sleeve essentially early on, it's rolling your sleeves up. Um, get, you just have to you just have to get on with it, don't you? When we're when when we're the only person that's that's really around in the business, but equally being a highly effective, capable and capable individual, and we can do worse than take a leaf out of Stephen Covey's uh, Stephen Covey's book. It's so then, as we go, we need to start focusing on where we add the most value and delegating delegating the rest. So we need to specialize a little bit within the business and define those roles for us as the leader and delegate the things that that we shouldn't be doing. Then we've got to start focusing on systems and processes, but essentially making it a turnkey business that's not too reliant on us. So it becomes about processes and, 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 and habits, uh, we like to refer to them as. And then developing other leaders, as I was mentioned before, change, and our role changes to supporting them to fulfill their roles effectively. And then as we get bigger, we become more of an ambassador for the business and promoting maybe the overall business rather than individual products and services within within the business so what is leadership i thought it's worth a moment or two just to have a quick look at that and essentially what is the essence of leading and this is a jim collins quote which which we particularly like and he defines it as the art of getting people to want to do what must be done and if you think about that first of all it's an art so there's not one right way to be a leader we've all got our own ways of, of doing it so it is, it is an art but we've got to get people to want to do so that's the that's sort of the alignment bit we're going to get them to want to do what must be done and that must be done means we've got to define what are the important things that that must be done and those of you that were on the business rhythm session last time around know that a lot of that 90-day planning is around getting to to what must be done so that's bridging then the strategy piece within within there so the art of getting people to want to do what must be done and if we want to become a good leader or if we want other to develop others as well uh, then we need to know ourselves first before we can lead ourselves and this is a nice little infinity loop to to, to show how that how that works because we all have traits based on our leadership uh, based on our individual traits our personality styles that leads to the way that we act which in turn will have consequences which in turn then will lead to lead to the lead to the results so if i'm overly keen on telling people jumping to conclusions if that's my trait to quickly jump to a conclusion my action is that i jump in and i tell people the consequences i may not have actually um, really understood the problem properly and therefore the results are not going to be as good as they could be or if i'm a salesman the same thing if i don't listen well enough so what i might want to do then is think about okay well maybe I'll, if i if i acknowledge that if i understand that 
then I can start to take a breath before I jump in. So maybe I can seek to understand a little bit more first, take a little bit of a pause. That should mean that I've listened better, that I've understood more what the, what the challenges are, um, and that should enable me then to um, achieve better results. So that comes links nicely in with Stephen Covey's seven habits. And if we're looking about being a more effective le leader, I encourage you to seek these out uh, really and, um, and have, a, have a think about them because you could do worse than picking one of these every 90 days or so and thinking, how could I, how could I improve that? So being proactive, obviously, first of all, as, as business owners, I would imagine most of us are proactive rather than reactive type people. So hopefully that's all right. But beginning with the end in mind. So always think about where we're trying to get to and then bring it back from there. Putting first things first. So again, thinking back to our 90 day planning, what are the really important things that must be done rather than getting bogged down in all the little things that we need to do? Looking for those collaborative solutions, thinking win, win. There's the seek first to understand, number five there, and then to be understood. So rather than jumping in, telling people what we want first, let's sit back and really understand the other person's point of view. Um, horrible American word, synergize, um, but we all know what it, what it, what it means, uh, even if it's spelt with a Z. And also um, sharpening the saw is about continual professional professional development and improving proving ourselves uh, louise enjoyed that one about synergize i think right so understanding ourselves one of the things that we do a lot with our clients we do with all of the clients that we work with on, a, on an in-depth basis is we do a work of leaders disc profile which takes things a little bit further than a standard disc profile and it looks at our ability as a leader to be able to see the big picture the, the vision side of things to align other people to it and execution and it gives us a benchmark identifies our strengths and our challenges and it's a really good way to go and that might be something else that you'd like to consider is doing something like that get a benchmark of 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 you as a as a leader as well as your disc profile and that's a good place to under start to understand yourself a little bit a little a little bit more um so that you can develop we've already already talked about about this side of things so i, I think i don't need to, to to labor on that again but but what another thing that i would really encourage you to have a look at is the is a little there's a little animated video online if you search for you can see it up the top there if you search for david marquette um m-a-r you can see the spelling up there q-u-e-t um uh, it's around greatness there's this little animated cartoon it's about nine minutes long and it talks about moving from he's a submarine captain uh basically a new class of nuclear submarines um in the in, in the u.s he's he's uh, uh, an ex-navy seal and he vows never to give an order again he realizes that he can't be the he can't think for 219 crew members that he's got on board his submarine and be the one that tells people what to do every time he's he, he they've got a big audit inspection coming on and he knows that he needs to um needs to change that way so he vows never to give an order again the only order he retains is the launch of the nuclear uh, nuclear missile but but everything else he moves from giving intent to from, sorry from giving an order to giving intent and have a have, have a look at it find it when you've got got nine or ten minutes you might even want to share it with some of your team because there's some really good takeouts uh, 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 around here and it changes the model that we think of from a military leader of uh, of just giving orders to giving that intent and there are three steps that he followed that helped him to to do that and the first was to stop giving orders straight away and did that overnight um and it's a little bit akin to to saying to people when they come to you with what should i do instead of saying well this is what i think you essentially ask okay, what, what what do you think we should do what, what what would you do what would you do in my shoes if it was your business what what would you do that kind of thing and that's a bit of a habit for us to break quite often because we like to give the answer like to demonstrate that, that we know what we're doing so take a pause maybe and then you can do that overnight and it starts to get other people to be thinking a little bit more um, as you would want them to think. Then a bit more over time, he found that if he started to ask, okay, well, so if the intent then is to position the submarine at this particular location, um, and then you're, and you're uh, fine, and you're saying we're gonna dive now, what do you think I'm thinking? And then the person comes back and goes, well, I think you wanna know if it's safe to dive. Yes. So what makes it safe to dive? 
hatches are closed, blah, blah, blah. And that's a, that's about making sure that within, within our business, we're getting them to start to think a little bit more in our shoes. So once we've got a solution, that takes a bit more time because they've got to think those things through. But that's about competence and about understanding what 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 is the safe thing to do or the correct way of doing things. And then finally, it's asking, is it the right thing to do? So that's getting people to think a bit more strategically. Is this what we really, really should be doing? So steps two and three take a little bit of time. And I think you said they took about 18 months to embed within uh, within uh, within the submarine. But step one is immediate and saw Im immediate change um, and had tremendous effects uh, on the on the business. So that's something that I, if you're going to have a takeaway and have a look for something, um, do search for that that video and, and see what see what you think about it. Within our model, there's a number of aspects of leadership that do span the whole model, but I've just picked out a few things from our in-flight checks, which by the way, if you'd like to have a look at doing the in-flight checks within your business with us, it's a great way of benchmarking where the business is uh, on scalability, but some of the leadership ones uh, to know whether leadership and vision are strong within the business is whether, first of all, whether the leadership team in particular understand each other's personality and leadership styles, but all team members identify a leadership stroke person improvement habit every 90 days that we've got our core ideology which is values and purpose are well defined and made role relevant by employees so they understand what they mean to them we haven't just got a list of values that are stuck up on the wall somewhere um, but we've actually personalized them to our own own roles and that we've embedded that core ideology in everything that we do all of our processes and things including recruitment reviews feedback all those good things and that we're identifying a core ideology improvement priority and implemented every night today so they're just a just a few but as i say leadership spans throughout the the, the model if you like for for building building a great business so that's all i wanted to say on leadership just as a that little bit of little bit of an overview uh, around some of the key things and just hopefully giving you some thoughts and reminders maybe one or two things that you might be able to think about but what i'm really excited about now is you know i mentioned the military um i would you know, i'm going to hand over to dr lizzie bernthal um who's a great friend of mine she's a select member got a lot of respect for for for, for lizzie she is ex ex military, the the best service, of course, the the, the RAF side of things. Um, but uh, Lizzie is going to give us a little bit of an insight into her views on leadership. You're on mute, though, Lizzie. <laughs> I was just I was just concentrating, getting my time oh. to make sure I've got my. Can time. anybody else hear Lizzie? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear. Oh, Kevin, you seem to have a microphone problem. Yes, brilliant. So here I am. So um, yes, 25 years in the army. I have a little bit about leadership. I have received a lot of orders in my life and I won't be giving any today. Now, the first thing I like to do is for you to clap yourself because the very fact you're here, you are a leader. So what I'm talking about here is and it's interesting that Kevin was talking about knowing yourself and leading yourself. In order to be a leader, you have to trust yourself because you have to trust yourself before you can trust others. And that is all to do with confidence. Confidence is all about trust, trusting ourselves, trusting our teams, trusting something will happen. And as part of that, we have to be resilient. We, Particularly right now, all that we've been through in the last, um, you know, two years, whatever gets on, glows longer and longer, we have to be resilient. And a part of that is our capacity to adapt. And within that, we have to uh, cope with risk and adversity. Like we've had so much to deal with over the last two years. And part of that is resistance, accepting that, oh my goodness, what's going on right now? The recovery process, when we think, well, okay, let's just deal with it. And then the reconfiguration, which is when we realise what's been going on, how we become the new person that we were before. So when I'm talking about that, we always hear about bouncing back, but actually we bounce forward. And we've had to do a lot of bouncing forward over the last two years because we are not the same person we were two years ago. Our teams have changed. Our businesses have changed. Things have come and go. We've had to be adaptable. And so the fact you're here is a huge, huge congratulations to you. 
So what I'm going to talk about is my C's of confidence. And part of that is um, what we, we've got, who we are being and what we are doing. And I'm all passionate about who we're being. But in order to be the, be, be the best version of us, we've got to do the best version of us as well. So to start with, I talk about my seed. What is your compass? We all have to have a compass. And part of that is our vision and our purpose. And who are the people that are going to be with us on our way? We learn so much about the how, but actually the how is not what we need. It's the who. Who are the people that are there to be our advocates? Who are the people like Bismarck, Stick, Kevin, Caroline, everyone within this team that are here to be our who's to help us on our way? And part of that, it's having a course. What is our course of action? What is our path? Which path are we going on? Are we on the right path? And if we're not, then we have to have the courage to change path, to make sure that we're on that right path. And a part of that is being creative, another C. And then when we're creative, we get the clarification and the clarification of where we're going and how we're getting there. But as part of that, as Kevin always alluded to, it's really important we collaborate, we connect, we have to have people with us. So who are those who are those cheerleaders for us that are going to be those that are actually fighting our corner, that we can collaborate with, that we can be better than we are ourselves because we're all part of a group. And a part of that, who, who are we communicating with to build up those collaborations? And as part of that, it's calculating the risks. What risks are we having to face? What are we going to overcome to do so? Let's, because change is with us all the time, as we've found even more than ever over the last two years. So anticipate the change and calculate the risks and then create that climate of absolute awesomeness and the impact that we want to make. So that's all about the doing. And the being, this is the most important thing, which I'm always really passionate about, being the best we can be, owning our awesome within us. And to reassure you, everyone has confidence and resilience with them already. No baby is born without confidence. Every baby that's born lies in their cot, looks up, they have chubby legs, they have hair sticking up, they never say, don't look at me, I'm having a bad hair day. They cry, they scream, they laugh, they move through emotions without getting any attention to it. And that's how it is. So we all have it within us. So when anybody comes to say they're lacking confidence, I always say, you have it all. You just haven't got, you just need to have a conversation to find it again. So part of that is making choices. And this is the thing that's most important. We all have a choice. Now, even when we feel we haven't got a choice, we're making a choice not to have a choice. And so as a leader, we make very powerful choices. Now, sometimes, and I'd like you to reflect after this, what choices have you made over the last two years that you didn't even think was a choice? You could have stayed at home, done the gardening, packed up your business, it's too difficult, but you didn't. You survived, became stronger for it, and you made that choice, even at the time you didn't make a feel you made a choice. Now, when I went to Afghanistan, not knowing if I'm ever gonna see my daughter again, I didn't see that was a choice because I knew I had a, a team to lead. And it wasn't till afterwards that I realized, actually, I could have had a choice. I could have not gone. But that would have been, what sort of leader would that have been if I'd put somebody else in their place, potentially get killed in my place? So sometimes we make choices that we don't even think are choices. So celebrate those choices that you made that now you realize was a choice. And as part of that is courage. Now, courage doesn't have to be doing great massive things like, you know, getting on a plane somewhere you don't want to know, go to. Courage is those, those every little things we do every minute of every day that we don't even see our courage. They ring up a client that you don't know how they're going to respond. Ring up a prospect to say, oh, I'm not sure how this conversation is going to go. Ring up a friend when you don't know how they are to see you don't know the outcome. Because my definition of courage 
is when there's no guarantee of the outcome. So how many times in a day do we do things we don't know what the outcome might be? That is little acts of courage where cumulatively make a massive difference. And as part of that, what can you control? We can only control ourselves. We can't control how other people are going to react. We can't control the weather. There's so much we can't control. And if you watch a surfer, I love watching, if you watch surfing, surfers do not try and control the waves. They go with the wave. So how can you be more of a surfer than a controller? Because when we, when we go with the flow, the magic happens. And how much time do we waste trying to control things that we can't control? So really focus on the things you can control. You can control how many people you call if you want to build your business. You can control um, connecting with the right people to build your business. So focus on the things you can control and don't waste energy on the things that you try to control, but you know that you can't. And as part of that, what are your core values? And I, as you know, I'm, those of you who know me now, I'm passionate about what your core values are. Integrity for me is absolutely fundamental. And what I mean by integrity, I mean, if you think of a bike wheel that's round, when it goes smoothly, it just smooths, goes round. If it's got a dent in it, it gets cloggy and it just doesn't flow properly. That to me is integrity. So it's been whole and complete, being the best version of you and doing what is right whereas morality is wanting to be right. So how many times in your communication are you trying to show that you want to be right or you make the other person wrong? So communication is absolutely vital that we're in integrity and we want the best outcome. And the other thing I would say about communication, there is no such thing as a difficult conversation. It's the stories we make up in our heads that make it difficult. So before you go to any communication, think of the outcome you want to have. And as part of that, you will be in integrity. You will perform much more powerfully. And as a result, the conversation goes far better. And as part of that, it's staying calm and composed. And I know that that's, can be really difficult at times, but that's all part of courage, being in control and being that leader. And be really conscious of the behavior that you're portraying because your team look up to you to be that person of calmness. So when notice how you control yourself. Now, this is where obviously the mindset stuff kicks in and doing whatever routine that you need to do to help you stay in that calm, confident way and stay centered because that is when we actually can be the best version of us. And be compassionate. We all need to support our teams. We all need to support our clients. Sometimes things don't go well. And actually having those conversations without criticism. And this is where curiosity comes in and not criticism, comparison or judgment, because that is when things go wrong. And particularly judging ourselves we are we are our own worst bullies i'm on a mission to get rid of toxicity in the workplace but i know part of that is sorting out our heads because no one can bully us like we bully ourselves so acknowledge you know how compassionate you are with yourself so that's a sort of a whole selection of a massive number of c's but the biggest thing i would say the biggest lesson for me is notice the choices you make, be courageous, notice what you can control and celebrate success with yourself and your teams because that keeps morale up. And when people feel good about themselves, they perform better. So the more you can celebrate and the little wins are often the most powerful as well as obviously the big wins. So celebrate with your team and you know, that's my tips for my short tips for C's. That's fantastic, Lizzie. Thank you very much for that. Can we have a quick round of applause for, for Lizzie? <laughs>
that's that's brilliant how many c's were there in there because I... oh I, did, I lost count i've got about i've got about 20 in fact i did a presentation yeah. last week on my c's yeah. and um, and uh it was really interesting oh craziness i forgot the trade craziness because you've got to have some fun in your business too brilliant and um yeah kev um stuart just asked about compass oh 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 yeah oh i see you've written them all down wow impressive. yes you well oh, well done Stu. <laughs> Stu's put a lot of them in the chat, so brilliant. Well done, well done, Stu. So I think we've got time for, you know, maybe just a couple of questions, and then we'll explore more in the in the breakouts. But anybody got a? Maybe if you could put your use the Zoom hand facility, that would be helpful. And we'll we'll maybe there's, if anybody's got a question or two for for Lizzie. Silence. We're we're all still trying to get our heads around all those C's. Yeah. <laughs> But the, the top the top three for well the top four for me are choice courage control and celebrate they're they're the they're, thing they're the ones that i think are the most powerful because well, a part of that then you get the confidence which so yeah okay so oh I, yes um no oh, hi lizzie really enjoyed that um i've worked for ex some excellent leaders in my time and i've also worked with some pretty awful ones and um i would sort of take from that the ability to just celebrate the, the small stuff every day and the little wins because you only achieve big things with lots of small steps and I think it's really important to um, recognize you know perhaps at the end of that day the end of that week the end of that that month um, yeah. what's gone well and, and how that's grown your business and I think one of the hardest things running your own business is frustration of a, a progress which is is slower and, and uh i think it was, was it martin luther king that said you know if you if you can't run if you, well, you can't fly you run if you can't run you walk if you can't walk you crawl but just keep moving forward um which sounds a little bit grim but when you add a, a little bit of celebration uh, and recognition of what you've actually achieved you know, even if it feels quite small in that moment um then it's quite powerful in the long term and if you can give that to other people that has a massive uh effect of empowering them them to grow in their confidence and uh, yeah, uh, yeah um, quite resonated really strongly with me so yeah thanks for that Brilliant. thank you and i think part of that i think we are hardwired for negativity because our brain's there to protect us so 70 i don't know how they're the research but seventy thousand thoughts a day or something crazy of which 70 percent are negative so we are hardwired to see if anybody says anything to us, we always assume it's going to be bad. So not always, hopefully not. But, you know, we are hardwired for the negativity. So we have to make even more effort to celebrate, because if we do one thing wrong, we only focus on our last mistake, not the 10 other million things that we've done that's right. So this is why celebration is so important. Brilliant. Thank you. Anybody else got the courage or confidence to ask Lizzie a question? <laughs> Or the choice. Or the choice. Yes. <laughs> no, I think I can't see anybody putting their putting their hand up. So uh, I'm going to say thank you very much again to, to to Lizzie for for some excellent insights there. And I think I'm going to going to want to listen back to that recording because you packed that with so many things um, that I think I'm going to want to listen to that. It's going to um, grab as much as I could put in ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. So,